नेक्स्ट लेट मी डिस्कस अबाउट वॉट इज कॉल्ड एज द हाफ लाइफ राइट सो इफ यू सी दिस पर्टिकुलर हाफ लाइफ विच इज नथिंग बट द टी हाफ राइट विच इज नथिंग बट द टी हाफ सो इफ यू टेक द हाफ लाइफ वॉट एग्जैक्टली डज दिस मीन रिमेंबर द हाफ लाइफ इट इज द टाइम रिक्वायर्ड to reduce the plasma concentration of the drug to half of the original value is called as the half life right so it is the time required right it is the time required to reduce right to reduce the plasma concentration right to reduce the plasma concentration to half of its original value right to reduce the plasma concentration to half of its original value that is 50% of the original value and this is called as the half life or the t half now a point what you should remember here is remember if the metabolism of the drug is more all right if the metabolism of the drug is more the half life is less right because more and more if it is getting metabolized what what will happen is majority of the drug will be excreted so the half life it reduces all right so if metabolism is more right that means majority of the drug is metabolized if the metabolism is more remember the half life of the drug is less and exactly it is vice versa as well if the metabolism of the drug is less right and even the half life is also more what does this mean if the drug is quickly metabolized that means majority of the drug if it is metabolized that means majority of the drug will be excreted and it reaches the 50% of your original value so that means what if the metabolism is more the half life is less that means within a fraction of time the concentration of the drug will reach the 50% whereas if the metabolism of the drug is less then it requires more time for the concentration of the drug to reach 50% so the t half will be more all right now the other thing is you take this particular half life remember it is a secondary pharmacokinetic parameter derived from two primary parameters okay so this is one of the secondary pharmacokinetic parameter all right this is one of the secondary pharmacokinetic parameter which is derived from right which is derived from two primary parameters right which is derived from two primary parameters and those two primary parameters they include volume of distribution and they include clearance right those two primary parameters they include volume of distribution and as well as the clearance now remember a point here this particular half life it determines the dosing interval and time required to reach the steady state okay so what is the use of this particular half life depending upon the half life of the drug we need to monitor or we need to determine the dosing interval so remember this particular half life it determines dosing interval i'll tell you an example here right it determines the dosing interval now for example if a drug has short half life if the drug has short half life then the dosing intervals are more if the drug has the longer half life then the dosing intervals are less 
okay so the half life it determines the dosing interval and time required to reach the steady state right time required to reach the steady state all right now what do you mean by this particular steady state remember what is the steady state it does not affect the dose of the drug right about the steady state i'll discuss in detail in the further part of the session but for now remember the t half it determines the dosing interval and it determines the time required to reach the steady state now the other point you remember here you take the drugs drugs having short half lives are administered more frequently than those having longer half lives that is what i was trying to discuss right so drugs having so drugs having short half lives they are administered frequently right they are administered more frequently whereas the drugs having longer t half right drugs having longer t half they are administered less frequently right they are administered less frequently and remember about the steady state i'll tell you in detail about the steady state but for now you remember it takes nearly around 4 to 5 half lives for a drug to reach the steady state right so it takes nearly around 4 to 5 half lives for a drug to reach the steady state right for a drug to reach the steady state it nearly takes 4 to 5 half lives now the other point let me tell you here if a drug follows the first order kinetics i have said you that the half life of the drug is constant right in the orders of the kinetics i have discussed so if the drug is following the first order kinetics right if the drug is following the first order kinetics then the half life of the drug is constant right the half life is constant now this is true both for raising and as well as the falling plasma concentration all right so remember the half life it is the time required to reduce the plasma concentration of the drug to half of its original value that is 50% of its the original value and if metabolism is more the half life is less and if metabolism is less the half life is more and this half life it is one of your secondary pharmacokinetic parameter which is derived from two primary parameters that is volume of distribution and as well as clearance and t half what is the importance of it is it determines the dosing interval and it also tells you the time required to reach the steady state and drugs with shorter t half they require frequent dosing and that is frequent distribution or the frequent intake of the drug and the drugs with longer t half they are less frequently taken by the individual and it it takes nearly around 4 to 5 t half to reach the steady state and first order kinetics the drugs whichever are eliminated by the first order kinetics like the half life is constant right let me continue the discussion on the half life still we have few more points so continuing with the half life like we have discussed that the drugs which are eliminated by the first order kinetics right the drugs which are eliminated by the first order kinetics their t half is constant right their t half is constant right remember this is true both when the concentration of the drug is raising and this is true even when the concentration of the drug is falling right i'll tell you example for this but for now remember this is true for both right this is true for both that is 
for raising concentration and for falling concentration of the drug right for falling concentration of the drug now what does this mean in first order kinetics what did we discuss constant fraction of the drug will be eliminated we will apply this here now when the concentration of the drug is raising the concentration of the drug will raise in the constant fraction and when the concentration of the drug is falling the concentration of the drug will fall with constant fraction so everything in the first order kinetic is the constant fraction now let me tell you an example here now for suppose when a drug is given by constant intravenous infusion what will happen when you are giving the drug by constant intravenous infusion initially the plasma level the plasma level of the concentration of the drug rises right and once the plasma level rises it reaches the steady state after reaching the steady state when the infusion is stopped the levels it starts declining now how it will raise how it will decline let me tell you right <coughs> so when you are giving the drug by iv infusion right when you are giving the drug by intravenous infusion so what will happen is right what will happen is initially the plasma level raises right initially the plasma level raises and after that the concentration of the drug it reaches the steady state right after that the concentration of the drug it reaches the steady state now after this right after this when the infusion of the drug once it is stopped right after this once the infusion of the drug is stopped then the level it starts declining right the level it starts declining all right so this is about when the drug is given by intravenous infusion now we will apply the constant fraction here now what we have discussed like for example the drug is eliminated at a constant fraction we will take 50% right we will take 50% the elimination of the drug from the plasma is 50% in one half life right 75% in two half lives 87.5% in the three half lives and so on so that is what that is the constant fraction that means once the iv infusion is stopped then the level starts declining in the constant fraction so if you take the elimination right if you take this particular elimination the elimination of the drug will be 50% in one half life right elimination of the drug is 50% in one half life and once 50% is gone out what is remaining 50% is remaining now in that if the 50% is gone that means 25 is gone okay so the elimination of the drug is 75% in the second t half and elimination of the drug is 87.5% in the third t half and so on and so on okay so in the first order kinetics the elimination of the drug is constant right elimination of the drug maintains the constant fraction in first half first year 50% in second year another 50% that means how much is eliminated 75% is eliminated in third year another 50% is eliminated that means how much is eliminated from beginning 87.5% is being eliminated all right so see this is when the level starts declining and remember the same is true for raising the plasma concentration right 
So remember the same is true for raising plasma concentration also that is with constant IV infusion in one half life the plasma concentration is half of the steady state and in two half lives it is 75 percent and so on all right so either when the drug is declining or when the drug is in, when the level of the drug is increasing that constant fraction is maintained when the drug is following the first order kinetics so what i want to tell you here is majority of the drugs they follow first order kinetics and it is only few drugs which follow the zero order kinetics